hey you, well normally I look at contrarian tweets in a pretty irreverent way, but I'm not going to do that today. The Daily Telegraph's cartoonist, Bob Moran, who's been drawing horrific pandemic-based cartoons for months now, openly called for his 40,000 followers to hound an NHS doctor. And this wasn't the only time I've seen this kind of language recently. Previously I watched a second episode of Loser Fox's car crash chat show. I expected a lack of self-awareness and unoriginal populist ignorance, but little more. And the first 30 minutes delivered. But my ears pricked up at this point. When do you swap a rubber bullet for a real one? Mm. As this was in reference to violent Australian protests, I first assumed he was talking about the police. Now that's shocking in itself, but it was actually worse. His follow-up questions made clear he was asking whether protesters should be using bullets. And the panellists didn't blink an eye. I would love that to be to be more peace, but at this point I, I completely understand why um, there's so much rage. Now remember, this isn't a dictatorship with secret police and summary executions. It's public health measures. But the panel were nonchalant about this. Martin Daubney even made this comment. You know, it seems to be a theme each week where I say, I, I don't really agree with political violence, but... <laughs> and he's not only condoning violent protests when it's a cause they agree with. Later on, condones violence against protesters they disagree with, saying this. And actually, I must confess, rather like when the... Um, the commuters at Canning Town ripped that Canning Extinction Town, Rebellion, well, yeah, yeah so. Extinction Rebellion scrotes off the top of a train and gave him a bit of a shoeing. <laughs> I watched it more times than I've watched Gaza score against Germany. <laughs> <laughs> now, in many ways, this is the height of absurdity. It's a small group of incredibly wealthy people, afraid of wearing a mask, sat in an expensive central London townhouse, laughing at violence against the police and the wrong kind of protester. But to me, that's what makes it so insidious. The violence has been reduced to a punchline. Now, the Telegraph frequently promotes Fox as an island of reason in a sea of woke madness, so it's little surprise they accepted Moran's toxicity right up until his cartoon's implied threats became explicit. Now, to me, it's often claimed that the liberal left acts with superior righteousness. And while cancel culture can cost someone their job, this kind of normalising of righteous anger and fetishization of violence on the contrarian right could easily cost someone an eye or their life.